So, hello everyone. My name is Sky, and I am throwing my hat into the Dungeons and Dragons ring. Um, I have been looking at the Artificer class and uh, reviewing some of the videos online, and so here's my take on it. Uh, first off, I think so. Going by YouTube, there's basically three main sources that I'm looking at that. Uh, I'm finding, you know, they're like most well put together, most well presentation, uh, easier for the audience to understand. Uh, so Dawn Forge Cast, Web DM, and uh, XP to level three. Um, what I found interesting was Web DM, Dawn Forge Cast. They, in my opinion, did not seem to understand what the artificer, the idea, the concept it is, and it goes with. Uh, XP to level 3, they did seem to understand it. Um, and so what I mean by that is the Artificer, you should think of it as an inventor. Um, now it's interesting that he starts out with Steve's tools because it does seem that the Artificer is the a cross between the wizard and um, a thief. Uh, and I like that idea. So, you know, somebody who takes apart, they understand what a thing is, what a contraption is, and they can put it together, they can make something neat about it. Um, I would even think of a artificer as a street magician. So someone who, they have their little box and they're able to put on a performance. You know, the box changes, it does different things, unique things. Um, you know, they're the guy that, uh, they would be per per putting on a magic show and sleight of hand tricks, uh, things like that. Um, so you think of the artificer as Q from James Bond. Uh, you know he's the guy that comes up with the gadgets for the hero or for the right situation at the right time. Um, and the other thing is, yes, you want to think of this guy as an inventor. Um, you know who is constructing all the items, all the things in this fantasy world of Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, an artificer would be the guy. Uh, plus, it's just the natural progression of the environment. Because when you get to the point of high fantasy, where uh, people are fighting with swords and shields, they have magic, they can you know, interact with the gods, um, research, technology, science, it's going to go, it's going to develop. And so you are going to get into the area of steampunk. Uh, and so I think that's what it is. You know, the artificer is... The, the way um, a GM and a player should look at it is, are you the creative type? Are you the guy that watches James Bond and thinks, like, you could write that script better or you would have the scenario play out differently, you know, with this or that gadget and tool? That is, those are, you know, that's when you should play Artificer. Because um, even when you look at the class, there's ideas of a, an intense robbery, that there's someone who is challenged or a counter to you. Um, and that's back to the inventor. So this is uh, Thomas Edison versus Nikola Tesla and Westinghouse. Um, and the reason why... So, spells. When you look at this sheet for the art Artificer, um, don't really think of them as spells. Think of it as terms of what can the guy construct? And... I would even go so far as uh, the DM and the player decide what can this guy build over time and look at it in terms of uh, what's something small and simple that he can put on himself uh, that does a certain function uh, or you know that he can construct, that he can carry with him, that can perform a certain function. And so that's where things like um, alarm, um, expeditious retreat, uh, you know, jump, uh, and then later on the the ones involving uh, going above water and below water, uh, you know, so breathing water and then flying. Um, for the current game campaign I'm involved in, the GM wanted an artificer who was basically uh, a multi-class paladin uh, stationed aboard a floating tower. And part of the concept of the paladin is that to never set foot on 
the earth again. So he is a tinkerer. He's a guy who's working on and building uh, aircraft for this floating tower. So uh, the way I was thinking of it with the GM is this guy's going to start out with his own personal uh, parachute system that he can deploy. And after a while, he'll, like, he'll figure out, like, okay, I can modify this parachute system into more of a controlled glide, you know, type parachute system, which, you know, the U.S. military does. And then you can decide, okay, um, I'm going to add on some, like, rockets, you know, <laughs> or I'm going to have some sort of effect, like, uh, and this is where you can see uh, the wind ability um, comes in of, I'm going to have, you know, I'm going to be a, those, you know, daredevil, parachute jumpers who have the fan on the back. So that way, you know, they're having the parachute, they can glide, and then propulsion is pushing them forward so they can kind of continue and even fly around a little bit. Um, so expand that out to... And the way I was thinking of it is maybe they start looking at Star Wars. So uh, this guy is able to construct a personal helicopter device. Um, so, you know, backpack he wears, has a gyro, you know, has a, uh, prop, you know, above him and, uh, is a primitive helicopter that, you know, it's really on his back, you know, he, there's no protection offered to him, uh, and he's very limited in what he can do. Next generation of that, there's more to the helicopter, it's a bit beefier, stronger, has a bit more stability, uh, there's more, you know, body to it, so, uh, now there's... Instead of being a backpack, now it's actually something the guy would sort of step on and or stand in. Uh, so like there's you know foot straps or foot you know holds, and then he you know, straps himself into the thing like you like would literally climb into it or step into it. Um, next generation, there's more of it, so it's more of a the guy sitting on a something. He's still exposed, but now it's starting to look more and more like a helicopter uh, with control devices and you know, main prop prop in the back. Um, Next generation, so now the helicopter is more built around the guy. He is exposed. Uh, potentially, the guy can still use a weapon while piloting this device. And that's the other thing is to realize is that um, if it's just a backpack and the guy's controlling things with one hand, with the other hand, he's got a spear or a lance or something and he's attacking. Uh, and as you keep developing, it gets to the point of like, we well, can't, he needs both hands to control this vehicle. Uh, and so that's where the, the interesting, like, so the vehicle is a part of, it needs more control. He's still slightly exposed, but now he can use dive bomb attacks. And, uh, and, and like I said, you're modifying each generation, what this device can do. So better control, faster, stronger, you know, more hit points. And now you start adding in special attacks. So dive bomb, dropping bombs, or, you know, whatever things. Um, and then, because the way I was thinking of it is, this guy could become a fighter pilot, essentially. Um, you know, just think of what skills, and yeah, now he just needs to build a fighter plane. <laughs> so, um, so using that logic for an airplane, I think you can apply the same for a boat and even a submarine. Because um, just looking at this, water breathing, uh, <laughs> the... Um, was it? Uh, there's a light in here, which to me is like, well, that's your headlight. <laughs> you know, that's you know, you know, that's the thing. You know, continual flame. You know, yeah, that's your headlight for your vehicle. You know, your real vehicle. Um, the what, expeditious retreat. I mean, I would think of it in terms of the guy has a thing that looks like a a car a window shade. Uh, it's you know, it's cloth and paper and with reeds and. If he deploys it, it opens up into a huge sort of screen that will, if you wedge it just right, it'll block a thing and you can attack it and it's just difficult to displace and destroy. Um, other things like that. It's just, you have to think like, so what's the point of the spell? So what would be the analog, real world, physical component that I, I could interact with? Um, even like the armor ones, it's uh, like, oh, you know, the you know, this artificer like tosses a one of the party members like here put this on and it looks like a strange package but put it on the neck and oh it's a whole it's a thing of temporary armor made out of wood or metal or something 
Um, the other way to think of it is this the artificer is a uh, con man or charlatan. Uh, you know, maybe even the guy who puts in the secret doors or secret you know, rooms in a building. Uh, so things like the dark vision, well, he develops a lens, but uh, invisibility. So for that, the guy throws a smoke bomb, and if he's in his own neighborhood, it, you know, he knows like where hiding places are at. You know, he built some hiding places into um, whatever corner or you know alleyway or whatever, and you know, the smoke bomb knows what he's doing. Bam, disappears. Uh, smoke clears. Oh, he's invisible. Can't see him. And you could have it that, well, the guy is, like, hiding in plain sight, but you just can't see him as long as he doesn't move. He can see and hear what's going on around him, but he just can't interact. Otherwise, he reveals himself. So, um, yeah. So, that's just the way I would approach the Artificer, is that if you want to be more steampunk, if you want to be... Um, because an artif artificer is part of the, the group of classes where you have some groups that are like a fighter, which they're able to go out alone, they're operating on their own, they don't need a base. Uh, once you start getting to characters like, uh, well, like a thief, they need a place to sleep. They tend to, you know, they're going to operate in their familiar areas. They're not going to go to a new city every day yeah, there'll be new people they can rob, uh, new marks, but they need to know the ins and outs of that city. They need to know who to be afraid of, who is the secret police, that sort of thing. Um, so the Artificer is definitely one of those base type guys, you know, because then you have a Bard. Bard would also operate you know, from a base. You know, they have a sort of their common areas, their hometown they would operate out of. A wizard, they have their tower. You know, like, a wizard is designed that they want to have a home to start accumulating materials and power at. Uh, artificer, same thing. It's They are designed to be at home. Uh, Paladin, you know, they have a home they kind of need to return to. So, yeah, it's kind of an interesting thing I'm noticing about some of these classes. So, that's just one way to think of it, is that, you know, if you want to be more of the guy at home, Artificer. Uh, and even then, multi-class with the Artificer. So, uh, yeah, just some ideas about what's going on. Um, take care.